today we're going to be working on hands. The tools you're going to need are the croquis pamphlet, a number two pencil or an HB pencil, your plastic eraser, a pencil sharpener, a clear ruler. If you have a sewing clear ruler, you can use that. If not, just any clear ruler will be okay. And also, if you have more of a professional pencil sharpener, you might want to use that. Also, for the tools, you're going to want your legal paper. So this is going to be a 8.5 by 14. And then this is just the cheap copy paper for a copy machine. And again, the reason I like it is because after you draw something, the paper is see-through and you're able to see from the top if you want to trace off. As well, this paper is really inexpensive compared to art paper. So the hand gestures that you're going to learn for fashion are very simple gestures and especially as a first semester class you don't have to be drawing anything that's really cool and crazy. We just need to keep it very very simple and the number one thing is to make sure that your hands are in proportion to your croquis. I just want to show you, so here is a walking model, and you can see here on her hand, it's very simple and basic. And it's in correct proportion to her body. Here's another walking pose with the same hand gesture. Again, here's the same exact hand gesture. Here's a little bit of a variation with the pointed finger sticking out hand in a pocket and then later on in the semester we're going to learn to do hands on hip and then here we just have some other quick simple basic hand gestures that you'll be learning for first semester now there's a whole series of videos on how to draw the 10 heads croquis. And the reason why it's 10 heads is because the girl that I show you in first semester drawing, she's gonna be wearing high heels. So the high heel shoe ends up making this girl 10 heads tall. You're gonna learn later on why it's 10 heads and all of the rules for doing the layout for the 10 heads figure. For now, what we're gonna learn is hands and the proportion of the hand to the 10 heads figure. So when we talk about this being a 10 heads figure, what we're saying is, is from the top of her skull to the bottom of her chin would be considered one head. And then as you count down, you have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then the 10th head would be at the floor. Using these proportions, we can do certain things with them. So for instance, your model's upper arm should be one and a half heads. Your model's forearm should total one head and her hand will total three quarters of a head. So again, if this is the total head and we took three quarters of that and we came over and we found her hand is exactly three quarters of a head. Then even if you draw the hand a little bit okay, not so great, or you're just sketching really quickly, if it's in proportion, it will look great on your model. When you look closely at the hands that I've sketched here, you can see all these very faint little guidelines and the hands are fitting inside of these guidelines. What I'm going to teach you now is the formula for finding these exact guidelines so then when you draw your hand inside of that, it'll always look in proportion to the rest of the body. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to trace off our hands and then we're going to find our knuckle locations. And this is pages three and four in your handout. So here's my uh, eight and a half by 14. 
since I'm right-handed, I have it at a slight angle because I'm going to put my left hand on the paper and I'm going to trace off my left hand with my right hand. When you trace yours off, we want to include the wrist bone. So make sure you bring your hand far enough into the paper that we have that wrist bone area. So go ahead and put your hand flat on the paper and have all your fingers comfortably together and your thumb inside. And we're going to trace this off starting just above your wrist bone. And as you go to the wrist bone, there's a little bump right there. And then follow your fingertips, but you do not have to go inside. We just want to know where those fingertips are, as well as your thumb. And again, here's the wrist bone and some of my arm below that. Something else we want to know is, where is this wrist bone? So on my paper, I'm going to put some dashes where that wrist bone is. Something else we want to know is, on your hand, you have a set of knuckles here in the middle of your hand, your largest knuckles. So I want to know where are these knuckles out here for my pinky, and put a little dash there. And the same knuckles line up with this middle knuckle of your thumb. So you can come down here and get that. The next set of knuckles moving up are here in the middle of your fingers. And these are the large knuckles. So putting your hand in place, we want to know where's that knuckle for your pinky, where's that knuckle for your pointer, and we also want this knuckle here for the middle finger come inside on the paper and find out where is that knuckle for that middle finger. Now the last thing that we want on here is in the middle of your hand lining up with your middle finger is that large knuckle there. So we want to have this also here on your paper. So put your hand back where it belongs and you can locate where that knuckle is and pull your hand away, but leave your pencil there and just go down and touch the paper. So it's somewhere in this area. And then for these two areas here in the middle of the hand, go ahead and make them little cross marks. So the next step we want to do is here at your wrist, we want to draw an oval put a line straight through it and we want to find the center of that oval. So here I could put a line through this. I'm going to draw an oval staying inside the wrist. And then we basically want to find the center of it. So you can just guess, double check that that's the center. And then once you have the center, we're going to draw a line going from the middle of the wrist through those two knuckles in the middle of the hand and all the way out the tip of your middle finger. Now when you're using a ruler, you're going to notice you can't quite line everything up because when we were drawing these, we just kind of freehanded it. But the most important thing is, is here's the middle of the wrist and the middle of your middle finger. And then basically you'll note that these locations here would be right here. So then when you're done, it'll look like the middle drawing from step four. Now the next thing we're going to do is in step four, we want to go from the outside edge of the wrist. We want to touch that fatty part of your hand and just let it V off into space. And then we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to start at the edge of the wrist. We're going to touch the fatty part of your thumb and then just let it V off into space. So again, I'm going to touch here and here.
and then we're going to get here and here. And again, these lines were number three and three inside the book. The next thing we want to establish is going through the middle of the hand is some guidelines. These guidelines, though, are not going to be straight lines with a ruler. They're going to be curves, like you can see here in your handout. Now, let's start with A. And basically, A is those knuckles right here in the middle of your hand, and then this big knuckle here on your thumb. So down here where your thumb was, put the letter A. And then up here on your pinky, where you had that, the large part of your knuckle, is A also. The second one is going to be B. So this is where we had put these marks on here. So again, these are the large knuckles that are on your fingers. So down here from the pointer finger would be B. Over here from the pinky finger would also be B. In the middle of the hand, this will be B lining up there, and this will be A lining up here. So you can see A to A and B's to B. The last thing we want to have is C. But if you look in the handout, C is a little bit confusing. It's going to go from the tip of your middle finger and then arching back to line number three. And then it's going to scoop very quick to come all the way back to B. The reason being is you have a right hand and a left hand. And having this curve come back to B and C here is going to distinguish between right hand and left hand. And you'll see how that works later. So again, come out to your fingertip and label this C. Now, let's go ahead and start getting our curves in here. So what I'm going to do is, since I'm right-handed, I'm going to turn it like this so I can get a nice, smooth curve pivoting with my wrist. So I'm going to, have to connect A to A to A. And whatever that curve already is, I don't want to change it. I'm just following it. And then go all the way to the line. So this line here that we labeled the number three, we want to go all the way to that line. Now when you do B, you're going to notice this curve here. And it also includes your thumb tip. So you're hitting that thumb tip and coming back to line three. So B at the pinky, the middle of the finger, at the pointer finger, the thumb tip, and then all the way to line number three. Now, once we've got this location, I want you to label this B and C. And you can see that right here in your book. So now we have a couple points for C. C is going to be right here at the fingertip and down here. And then C is naturally going to come all the way over and hit the line number three. So if you need help visualizing this, you can see it here in the pamphlet. So again, I'm going to connect C back to B and C. So this is a quick curve. And then when I come over here, I want to be similar to these two curves that already exist. So I'm just eyeballing what is B doing, and I'm just staying kind of parallel with that. And now what I've drawn is a left hand and only a left hand.
The next one we're going to do is the profile view hand. So your hand with the profile view. So again, get out a fresh, clean piece of paper and bring your hand in here far enough to where your uh, wrist bone is on the paper. And we're going to do an L shape with our hand. And you're going to trace it off here as a profile shape. And as you go around your thumb, be careful that your thumb doesn't move in space and you're still holding the same shape. And as I pull this away, I can just double check if my thumb did something weird. I can come back and just quickly clean up that line. Now with this profile shape, we want to come back and get our knuckles again and the wrist. So there's the wrist, the middle knuckle, the knuckles in your hands, and the big knuckle on your thumb. So again, I'm setting my hand up where it was, and then I'm getting my wrist bone is here, the knuckle on my thumb, the middle knuckles on my hand, and the middle knuckles on my finger. Now what we want to do is we want to get the oval, number one, and then number two, we want the center of the oval going through the center of the fingers. So here we have our wrist bone. So an oval for the wrist. We'll draw a line straight through that. We want to guess what would be the middle of this. Just double check if you're right. Fix it if you need to. And then we want to come all the way through the middle of the fingertips here. And so that's line number two from the booklet. Now we want to get lines three and four. So this is going to be from the wrist and then touching like your knuckle or the fingertip. So for me it's from the wrist and then touching out here on the fingertips. And then the bottom one again it's from the wrist, the fatty part of your hand, the tip of your thumb. And again, this is four, and this is three. Now what we want to do is, the same as we did on the previous hand, where we were getting these curves for A, B, and C, we want to find the same thing here. So A is going to be this middle knuckle connecting to your big thumb. So this is A. B is going to be the middle knuckle from your finger connecting back to the thumb tip. And then C is going to be all the way out here at the fingertip connecting again back here to B and C at the thumb. So go ahead and let's put in these arches. So I'm going to connect up A B and C coming back to B and C. And now we have our arches for this hand as a profile view. Now what I want you to do is I want you to look at both of these and see what they have in common. So you can see here in the handout on the pamphlet, you can see here, so step five from the flat hand and step 10 from the profile hand, if you look at just the outlines and you don't look at the actual tracing of the hand, you'll see that there's a lot of similarities in these two shapes. And what we can do is, if we can take those two shapes and mold them into just one basic shape, then you're going to have a formula for drawing hands. Something else that's really cool is, if you look at the photos here, I have basically the same arcs and the same shape guidelines on top of photos. And so you'll see, if you have a flat hand view like this, as you open up, your pinkies and thumb, you'll see how 
they're following along these guidelines. So this guideline C would continue out like that, and it gives you the shape for your pinky out here. And it's giving you the shape for your hand as it's closing down. Same thing on the profile view. As your hand is out here, if you were to move it out further, C would continue something like that. And then as you close your hands together, you'll see that this fingertip is following this curve. So my fingertip is following this curve coming all the way down to the thumb. Boom. Just like if I had the flat hand view and I was going like that with my hand, it's the same arcs. And if I put my profile hand on here, you would see it's the same arc inside of there. So having these formulas combined into one basic formula is how you'll be able to come in and draw all these different hand gestures and have them look like they flow and blend and also fit your croquis perfectly. So that's what we're going to do in the next step is I'm going to show you some formulas to get this guide and then you're gonna have this where you can just memorize it and at any point in time, you could lay down the guide really quick and then start drawing your hand inside of that formula.